Welcome to I Can Science That. Today I want to discuss the curve of the horizon. We are investigating whether or not there's any curvature on the horizon. So let's take a picture of the horizon and look for some curvature. This image was originally posted by a YouTuber who went by Rory, but he no longer posts and the channel is not active anymore. The image is still available and this is an excellent example. What we're looking for in a photo like this will be a very clear horizon. We don't want haze or clouds uh, or mountains obscuring the nice straight ocean horizon. We also want as wide an angle as we can get. We don't want to zoom in on a distant horizon because that will, a zoom will limit the amount of curve that we see. It will limit the width of the curve. To see more bendiness, we want a wide curve. Now, when we use a wide angle lens, we have to watch out for distortion caused by the lens itself. We want to know, is the curve caused by something truly there in the image or is it caused by the light passing through the curved lens of the camera? So what Rory did was he set up these two straight, straight beams, one above and one below the horizon. The idea here being that if there is any curve caused by the camera, we will see these, these red beams will get distorted by that. Uh, on the other hand, if the curve is actually there on the horizon, we should be able to see a difference in curvature between the water horizon and those red beams. So he took this photo and this, uh, if I understand correctly, is at about 500 meters altitude. Um, which is plenty high to see some curvature if there is any. But we are talking about a very tiny amount of curvature. So when we look at this image, it looks pretty straight. I mean, he managed to cram the horizon in between those two beams there, and there isn't a lot of space in there. So we're gonna have to really zoom in on this image and count pixels and see if there's any curve at all. I'm going to do image, scale image, not proportional. And let's take it to one tenth of its original width. So from 4,000 pixels across, we'll go to 400 pixels across. So here we go. Boop. And let's take a look and see what we get. In order to compare whether this, this is truly curved or not, let's generate, let's use the software to generate a perfectly straight line across there, the horizon, and we can compare and see. Indeed, I think it is pretty plain that the horizon is curved. This is the endpoints, and the horizon bumps up in the middle. How about these red beams? Are these, are these red structures, are they also being curved. Remember what we were worried about, perhaps the camera caused the curve. And if that's the case, then these red beams should also be curved. Let me use the same technique. I'm gonna just drop a straight line all the way across the image that is matching up with this, the left, uh, the, uh, the red beam on the left. So there you go, I'm gonna call that a straight line. Are the beams curved? compared to that line. I'm going to say no. There you go. Um, no, that looks, that looks pretty straight to me. Uh, the curve is in the water and not in the beams. Perhaps the, the image manipulation that I'm doing here is what's causing that curve. Maybe the curve wasn't there because, you know, we couldn't see it back when, uh, let's take it all the way back. So just like before, let's drop a perfectly straight line across here. Um, I'll zoom in so I can try and get it really accurate. Here we go. There's the beginning of the line. Take it all the way across, all the way across, all the way across. Drop a straight line right there. Now, do we see any curvature? Yeah, we do. Look, the, the water line is rising up in the middle away from the line that we just made. 
the, the, the pink line here is a perfectly straight line. And we can see here that the water does not follow it. Based on this, you can see that there is a curve here and the compression technique is one way to help us see that, but we don't need the compression technique. We can just drop a straight line across there and see the curve. All the compression technique does is bring this same amount of gap and bring the endpoints in closer to that so that you can see the endpoints with no gap closer to the middle with a gap. In fact, if I just do that again, uh, let's do the scale again, scale image, same amount I did before. We'll see why that happens is the, the pink line remains straight where there's no gap on either endpoint and there's a few pixels of gap here in the middle. And it's those same few pixels of gap that we saw before we did the compression. So Rory's test was only from about 500 meters and you can barely see any curvature at all. We have to analyze the photographs or compress them in order to see it. So what about we get some altitude? With his permission, I'd like to share with you a few stills from an amateur weather balloon sent by Mr. Sensible. I will put the link to the full video down in the description, of course, for you to take a look at. Um, but let's just grab some stills and see what they look like as we go much, much higher. First, let's take a look at a fairly low, fairly low altitude image from Mage. This is 1546 meters, so about three times as high as Rory's image. But I do see there's a cloud deck here, so how high above the clouds are we? That's another question. Um, but hey, let's take a look. Is there any curvature there? I'm gonna say I don't see it, but let's do let's do the thing, right? Do we see any curvature? Nah. I'm gonna say not really. So at 1500 meters, looking at the cloud deck. Uh, looks to be that um, those clouds are very close to eye level. Let's go a little higher. Let's go to, um, this is 13,574 meters. We still have clouds, but now the, the camera should be well above those clouds. Now I definitely feel like I'm starting to see some curvature there, but overall I'm still not super duper impressed. Even at 13,000 meters, not all that awesome. Let's get up even higher, 35,696 meters altitude. And now I'm seeing curvature plainly with no, no tricks, no lines, no, no compression necessary. That is absolutely an obvious looking curve. It's a bit challenging to decide exactly where to put my line because we're getting a, a gradient. The horizon is not sharp and distinct like we'd want to. It's a fuzzy, hazy. And it definitely looks curved. Um, and if we do the compression, go. And you know, yeah, super duper curve. That's the curve right there. Maybe that was a little subjective because this is definitely sort of a gradient and it's hard to say, are we being fair with exactly where we're drawing this line? Let's try to be a little bit more specific about it. If I just crank the contrast up, uh, I can, have it essentially it'll posterize into these three bands, three bands of color there, and that that'll create our horizons. Now the computer is deciding exactly where the the lines are, and I think we can absolutely agree now those are those are curves.
Okay, go. And there you go. Um, that is an extremely obvious curve. It was visible before we did the compression. It was visible without the line. Adding the line and doing the compression really does accentuate just how obvious that curve is. Maybe you're thinking that, uh, that this curve that we're seeing here is caused by lens distortion. If that's the case, then we should be able to compare with a lower altitude image. Um, let's go with this one. And we should see the same amount of lens distortion in those two. But we don't, right? You see, at the lower altitude, it looks very straight. But then when we go up to a higher altitude, it looks distinctly curved. People have asked, you know, oh, you ever you ever done that for yourself with your own pictures? And yeah, you know, of course, of course I have. Okay, so here's a shot out of an airplane that I took. Again, all you want to do is you want to put your phone into the wide angle mode, um, the widest shot that it can take. Put that phone right up against the glass of the window and take a picture where the horizon is as close to the center as you can get it. Yeah, I think this is a, a, as close to the center as you can get it because that's where your, your camera will have the minimum amount of distortion. And then let's do, um, let's do the same trick. Let's do the compression. And sure enough, I think we can see that the clouds now, it's a cloud layer. So if you're trying to do this for yourself, obviously it would be better uh, to do this on a cloudless day when you can get a shot straight down to the water and get a nice crisp, clear horizon. But um, I think you can see here that there's I mean, something curved. Uh, it's the clouds, right? And so maybe there's, maybe it's curvy clouds, if, if that's the way you want to go with it. All right, I think that's good enough to establish that we can, in fact, see curvature. But as I'll try to explain in the next video, it doesn't really matter. Once we've established that the horizon is below eye level, that's really all it takes to uh, show that it must therefore be curved because we know that the horizon is a circle. And anytime you have a circle below eye level, it appears to be curved. So um, of course it's curved, right? Of course it's curved if it's a, a horizon and it's below eye level. And I'll go over that in the next video. I'll see you over there.